If you open up an incognito tab and go to YouTube and you type in how to be a, one of the first things that comes up is how to be a Therian, which is someone who identifies as a wolf. So let's adopt some radical empathy and put ourselves in the shoes of some deeply confused 12, 13, 14 year old who goes to YouTube to find out if they are a Therian. And maybe this will give us some insight into the psychological turmoil that many young people find themselves in nowadays due to their brains being absolutely colonized by transnational tech corporations feeding children digital crack. Welcome to the Therian Territory Guide on how to find out if you are a Therian and how to figure out your stereotypes. I kind of made a video about this before, but I kind of realized that I've mostly been talking about my own experience because I thought that my music choice is subpar, in my opinion. Experience would be a good example for other people who are figuring out about themselves whether they are a Therian or not. But uh, it kind of turned out that my advice on how to figure out if you are a Therian and uh, how to figure out your stereotypes was kind of in the back of the video. So not everyone has seen that probably. So right now I've decided to make like an ultimate guide. I have written down everything that I can possibly think of that may certainly help you with figuring out your identities. Hi guys, welcome back to my Therian territory. You may call me Thorn and- Thorn? Alright, let's keep going. I'm not really interested in making fun of this person. I'm interested in trying to understand why this video has 280,000 views. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys my Therian Territory Guide on how to figure out if you are a Therian or not, and how to find out your Therian and stereotype is are. Out what your stereotypes are. I'm going to dive right into Stereotypes? There, you shouldn't stereotype people with lisps. I'm sorry because I know a lot of you have been waiting for answers for a very long time. So there are a couple of things you have to do before you actually start questioning whether you are a Therian or not and what your stereotypes would be. Before I start anything about this video, it is very important to note that questioning can take months to years even, and that's okay. You do not have to conclude that you are a Therian and you do not have to conclude a stereotype within like a day or a week. No, take your time. Take as much time as you need even. The more time you take, the more you can take into consideration, the more accurate your identity will most likely be. First of all, it is- The more that you dwell on whether or not you might be a wolf, the more accurate it will be. I don't know about that. I feel like the more you dwell on something, the more you dig yourself into your own hole, right? You should be talking to things about people, but I don't know. It's incredibly important to know what exactly Therian to be is. If you're going to claim about yourself that you are Therian, while you actually don't really know what it is, then then you might be identifying as the wrong thing. Because it's a very specific term with a lot of misconceptions, so I'm just gonna give a straight up definition okay. just for the sake of it. Therapy Perfect. means you non-physically identify as an animalistic being based on involuntary non-human experiences. Identifying as an animalistic being on a non-physical level based on involuntary non-human experiences. This is animism this seems like a reversion to our original uh psyche pre-culture or pre-civilizational i believe humans identified with animals and spirits in the rivers and all that stuff so this is interesting our scientific materialist worldview is so is breaking down so much that we are reverting to our deepest defense mechanisms that means that you actually experience and feel and believe that you are an animal even though it isn't on a non-physical level and experiencing therapy literally means that you have non-human experiences involuntarily therapy has a lot of misconceptions floating around on the internet what is interesting between that and being schizophrenic? Let's keep going. Such as starting to be- Obviously, I regard this as problematic, so I won't hide that bias, but let's try to keep the lens of radical empathy. Being inherently spiritual, being inherently a belief, being inherently a connection only, those are all misconceptions. And I've actually made a video not long ago in which I explained 10 misconceptions that I commonly see within the Therian community. So I recommend checking that out first. So first off, do research about their entropy and look up the misconception. The third thing you have to do is realize that there are more kinds of their entropy out there than you might think. We happen to have name 
names for them, such as paleotherapy, which means that you identify as an extinct animal, cladotherapy, which means that you don't necessarily identify as one animal, but rather as a whole clod of animals. And for example, polymorphs, people who constantly experience a change in their non-human identity. And there are more out there, but what I'm trying to say is that therapy does this is like, you know what this is like? This is like picking your uh, class in Warhammer, right? Like I play Iron Hands and there are so many Space Marine chapters to choose from. Cause look, this is obviously a bunch of people who watch this and are falling into this are autistic, right? And obviously everyone who plays Warhammer 40K is not everyone, but a significant number of people are probably autistic. And you've got all these different, you've, you have all these different factions. Then you have the, the sub chapters for Space Marines. Like I said, I'm playing Iron Hands with Iron Storm Spearhead because I like, yeah, Iron Father Pharaohs. Jesus Christ. Because he gives plus five feel no pain. You put him with a heavy intercessor squad, that's toughness six, three wounds each with five up feel no pain. That's insane. Anyway, my point is this goes deep. There's a lot of lore here for, for people to attach to doesn't inherently mean that you strictly identify as one animal that lives out here in this world at the moment. So it can be a lot more than that. So look into those concepts as well, especially when you are questioning, keep those into account, keep extinct animals into account, keep clots into account, keep into account that your identity may change. And the fourth thing that's also very important to keep in mind is that there are other labels out there that are considered alter human, that are considered a non-human experience. So you don't necessarily have to identify as an animalistic animal. There's also the concept of other kin, where you experience behaviors that are more tied to typically fantastical creatures or anything that isn't animal related. However, that still could be animal related, so it's important to look up the definitions of other kin and therapy and compare the two. But there's also theriomythic and there's also fiction kin. Oh there's a lot of different terms out there. Okay, the problem that I am sensing here is normally we would regard this as, this is like a form of uh, alternative medicine, right? Like this is a person speaking with some sort of almost academic level of expertise, right? And that's why she's saying, do research, do research. You know, you need to understand these things. Mainstream medicine would normally marginalize this point of view as homeopathic or alternative medicine, that's quack science. But because this has to do with gender identity, there's sort of a religious aspect to it that I feel makes it more immune to the criticism that should otherwise be levied against it. like. Dr. K and Dr. Mike just had a debate about Ayurvedic medicine, and I think the medical establishment is more quick to criticize that, which fair enough, it should you should criticize all forms of medicine, but not so much this because this has gender identity attached to it, which is a which is a religious like social phenomenon out there that may describe your experience a lot better. And the last thing you should do before you start questioning whether you are a therian or not is realize that therapy is a different experience for everyone. What I mentioned at the beginning of the video is like a very strict definition of what therapy means. And so long as you hold on to that definition, everything that strays from that, everything that you may experience that is different than other people is totally okay. You're totally free to identify as a therian in whichever way you want. So long as you hold on to the definition I've given you before that it is an involuntary experience, it's not a choice to be a Therian, and you have to experience some type of non-human behavior in order to call yourself a Therian. Non-human behavior. I feel like this could genuinely confuse someone who is like schizophrenic or something, because what does it mean to experience non-human behavior? I mean, I assume a schizophrenic feels that the delusions they experience are non-human. Certainly they are, and in, in they're non-typical human. Worrisome. But the first question you have to ask yourself in order to figure out if you are a Therian or not is, do I experience non-human behavior involuntarily? Oh, here we go. We'll get our answer right here. But there are a couple of tips I can give you in order to figure this out about yourself. First of all, it is important to realize that you are human. You are still physically human no matter what you identify as. Okay. That means that you still have human instincts and human behavior. And humans are animals just like every other animal out there. Therefore, we have our Valid. own instincts and our own roots because we used to descend from apes. So what I advise you to do is to... That's... All right. I'm thinking that that's based. Based observation. Correct. 
research the instincts and the behaviors of humans or apes for that matter and realize what kind of things about yourself are simply human. It's kind of to differentiate the human behavior from your potential non-human behavior. It is however important to realize that not all therianthropic behavior specifically is non-human because it can still be the case that you happen to experience something that humans typically also do however you experience it in a very highlighted way in such a way that you feel like it's so strong that it's probably not even fully tied to your human self. That's totally okay, but if you... I don't know what that means exactly, so let's keep going, You can I guess. tie everything you experience to very normal human behavior or instinctual behavior of humans or apes, then perhaps consider that it might not exactly be fair in the be. To give some examples of this, we happen to be very social creatures. We are omnivorous, meaning that we also have our predatory urges. As humans have a natural attraction to nature because that's just where we come from and seeing a site that gives all sources that you need to live it's very pleasant to us that has been proven so in conclusion True. you kind of that's facts that's facts have to differentiate your human behavior from your non-human behavior but it's okay if it sometimes merges a little bit another thing that you may want to do is look into the theron community and see what they express as common theron experiences this may include behaviors urges instincts that are all not related to their human selves but there's for example also an occurrence called a shift where you go from a more human state to a more animal state in any way possible and there's also an occurrence called species dysphoria where you really feel sad and you feel sorry over the fact that you live in a human world and live in a human body species dysphoria i don't even know so is the way that mental health is updated is people like this start the conversation they create these terms and then those terms get integrated into the dsm-5 is the dsm-6 or 7 gonna have species dysphoria in there that seems problematic that seems like then we are dissolving any and all categories and that is not good body while you actually want to be in the body and in the life of another animal. It is important that everything I just mentioned, except for general non-human behavior, um, things like shifts and species dysphoria doesn't necessarily have to be your case. Not every therian experiences this. And also, if you only experience species dysphoria, for example, that will not make you a therian either. But they are common experiences in the therian community, so if you happen to experience it yourself, it might be a good indicator that there is something going on. What would it look like to experience species dysphoria versus j dis j versus body dysmorphia of some kind? This is where this is where the the alternative medicine homeopathy type stuff comes into play. I believe it's homeopathy. I, mean, I hope I'm using that term correctly. I'm too lazy to look it up right now. You're kind of able to answer yourself the question: Do I experience non-human behavior involuntarily? If the answer is no you're probably just not a Therian. And that is totally okay. You can go ahead and look into other kinds of alter human identities, or you can just embrace your beautiful, <laughs> unique self. It doesn't necessarily have to be tied to any label. If the answer is- what? Why isn't that the default advice? Why don't we embrace our beautiful, unique selves and not ha have to identify as a Therian? Because it almost sounds like, oh, well, it's okay if you're not a Therian. You can, you can embrace your unique self. Of course, we Therians, you know, we're going to continue to identify in our way. And it's like, well, what if I was interested in being a Therian? Now you get to be a Therian and I don't? It's like, it's interesting. Yes, however, congratulations, you are experiencing therianthropy and you are free to call yourself a Therian. So now you've come to realize that you are experiencing non- you got the Therian pass. You got the Therian word pass. Human behavior involuntarily, and that, that means that you are a Therian. Most Therians, however, directly tie their Therian to be to a specific animal or animalistic being. And this is called a Theriotype. The Theriotype is you. It is the animalistic embodiment of the Therian to be that you experience. It's not a character, it's not role play, it's not in any way different from you unless you experience something very specific. Your Theriotype can, for some reasons, for example, the theory behind your Therian to be, have a different age or a different gender from you. However, gender Generally, it is considered as literally you or a part of you. The first. This is like when the body of Christ, when the wafer at church turns to the body of Christ. I believe this is transubstantiation. The, bl the blood of Christ, the wine becomes the blood, the bread becomes the body. This is this is religious, clearly, right? This I don't. Is that even controversial anymore to say that this is a religion? I, and I don't mean that denigratingly because I don't believe I don't believe Christianity is bad or human beings are inherently religious obviously
Some would dispute that. This question you have to ask yourself in order to figure out what your fairy type is. What are the non-human behaviors I experience? You've already concluded that you experience them, but what exactly are they? What are you experiencing that you deem as non-human? I highly recommend you literally just log everything. You literally just make a list of the non-human experiences that you have, but you can also- I hope she's gonna provide some examples because I don't know, because she earlier said, remember that you're a human and you're fundamentally not changed physically by identifying as a therian. So what constitutes a non-human behavior or experience? Because if a human experiences it, then how could it be non-human? Am I silly for addressing, for, am I silly for approaching this in like sort of a Socratic manner? Should I just be making fun of it? I don't know, because I feel like even just saying that of like, well, let me logically critique this. It's like, look, clearly this is not built on logic, even though it's presented as if it has logical, epistemological validity by laying out all these different subcategories of Therian type or whatnot. This is confusing. I'm confused and I'm 27 and I'm pretty sure I'm not Therian. I can only imagine what a 12 or 13, 14 year old, you know, would be confused about as well. This is, this is problematic, okay? Play Warhammer instead. So many people often have the tendency to just straight up jump into one animal to question. This is very not wise because it means that you are fully comparing yourself to one animal and chances are big that you might conclude to yourself that you are the animal even though you may not be because there are so many other animalistic beings out there that may fit your experiences a lot better. What animal do I most feel like? If I were to, if I were to, Honestly, I feel like I'm naked mole rat. I hide in my office as if it's a underground bunker. I make videos reacting to people asking me what animal I feel like to determine my stereotype. Um, okay, I think I may end it here. The fundamental takeaway, psychologically, that I would like to convey is that the phenomenon of projection is fundamental to the human experience. When we hear the word projection, I think most people, right, they regard it as a specific defense mechanism. Like if I'm uncomfortable with silence and I see two people walking together in silence, I project onto you know them, oh, they must be uncomfortable. When in fact, people could be very comfortable in silence, which I've learned to become more comfortable in silence as I got older, thus realizing the projection that I would project on the people. That's the defense mechanism sort of way we look at it, but literally our entire phenomenological experience is a function of projection. Everything we see literally is light projecting out, and all of the objects and subjects in the world have emotional valence that comes from inside of us, obviously. And so this th Therian idea is people looking at an animal and then that eliciting some sort of emotional response, them projecting it outward, not knowing that that's, that, that feeling of being connected with the animal is derived from within and not literally something outside. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I worry. I worry for the youth. Okay. This is why you should, if you, if listen, if you've got autistic children, you better give them a Warhammer, Terminator, Scout Squad, whatever, get them painting early, get them into the game. And that will, that will be good. I wish everyone uh, and all the Therians good luck and Godspeed.